This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by NordVPN. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash rogue. Sign up for a huge discount on two years plus. Get a bonus gift. And if you don't like it, you can say Baxi's 30-day free trial in your face. You're going to love it. Dude, Sohan, you did a fantastic job of teaching us. I think it's all in our brains now. We remember everything. Jason, this is called a what? Uh, the Shenzhou. Uh, 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 this this knife is called the... Uh, tea, tea knife. Okay, uh, uh, this scrapey doodle? Uh, scrapey daddle. O old grandpa's tin pot. Yep, that's called uh, the, 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 the pot, the pot, the potter, potter. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ready for the advanced lesson. Let's do it. All right, everyone, we're back here at the West China Tea House with Sohan. Sohan, thank you so much for coming back. Last time we learned all of the basics about uh, tea and uh, how to drink it, what to look for, all the tools and everything. So I think we're ready to go to the next level. And by the next level, what we mean is we want to look like awesome badasses of tea knowledge because between you and me, I suspect we may have Low T. <laughs> you said we get one, right? That's your one for today. Okay. Yeah. Can I throw the frog at him? Do I get one of those? <laughs> no, I don't his head? No. I bet that would wreck him. <laughs> I want to learn all of the cool backstory. I want to be able to sit here and, 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 and just know more. Wait, what do you got? First thing that you need to know to really drink tea is ingesting liquids. Most people can do this. Babies learn how to do this. Very, very basic skill, but make sure if you're showing up at a tea house that you can actually drink liquids with your mouth. That's so, super, super important. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Beyond that, yep. relax. People think tea, tea ceremony. Wait a minute, so, so I, I've, been, I've been sitting here on my knees this whole time? Yeah, I, you can I, chill, I can, you can lean back, I'm gonna, you can see, cross I, I figured this was more like a hookah lounge kind of vibe, but this wouldn't be rude? If you're serving tea to your Chinese mother-in-law on your wedding night, don't do that. Okay. But at a tea house, when people are chilling at this tea house, for sure, and at a, like a casual tea house, you can sit however's comfortable. If he takes his pants off, use the tea knife. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's when you can throw the frog, yeah. But you know, people see this and they're like, oh, you know, formal, like, Ceremony, formal, that's Japan. This is Chinese tea culture. Japanese tea ceremony is very, very formal. You do sit on your knees. They even have a section at the end where you roll onto your butt so that you don't stand up and then fall over because there's no blood in your legs. Chinese tea service, we want to be comfortable. We want to enjoy the tea, each other's company. So that's the main thing. That said, there are some badass little tricks. First of all, in Chinese tea culture, do you serve your own tea or, or, or exclusively, if you're at a tea house, it's so that you are being served tea? You can do both. Sometimes, uh, you know, I'll come back. I know China. what he's doing. He's doing the thing hey. where he's waking up the uh, the, mm -hmm. the pottery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. See, good yeah. job. You were paying attention. Yeah, you were paying great attention. So uh, it depends where you are. Uh, China is huge. Sometimes I'll come back from China and people will be like, "So how's the weather in China? Like, <laughs> you know, how's the weather in America? You know what I mean?" So there's different. Oh, you're from cultures. Texas. Do you know Edgar? <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I actually do know Edgar, though. But yeah, but there's there's all kinds of different expressions of tea culture all throughout China, and the, you know where I lived in Chengdu for three years, people will drink their own tea. A tea house is outside. You're sitting at bamboo chairs and tables. You're playing mahjong. You're smoking cigarettes. You're getting your ears cleaned by a dude. Uh, you know, in the public square, and you're just, you're sitting there and you've got your guy wand. One of those things stood out I'm in my mind. I'm gonna yeah. pump the brakes there a second. You just have guys roaming around cleaning ears? Cleaning your ears, it's a thing. They, they've got their little clapper things, so you know they're an ear cleaner, and they come around and they've got their little, like, it's like, you know, a chef unrolls their little chef knife thing. They've got the little bitty Murphy, roll. I'm gonna confess right now tea scooper, ear scoopers. That sounds so <laughs> I would, I would so It's really cool. Clean. It's really cool. If y'all ever want to do a China episode, let me know. I'll take you to Chengdu and we can, <laughs> yeah. we can get your ears cleaned while you drink tea. I mean, we're all here. Let's just go. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really, really soothing. But, that, you know, that's Chengdu, Sichuanese tea culture. Very chill, chilling out, drinking tea, drinking straight from your gaiwan like that. You know, where people would do this is in the southeast of China is where this practice of serving tea from these little vessels into these little cups, Gongfu Cha as we know it, became really popular. And it spread all over China, and it did exist in imperial China, but it kind of got, you know, pushed to the side in the Cultural Revolution. They're getting rid of a lot of Chinese culture, but it persisted in Southeast China. And that's where this practice comes from. And they don't really do that at a tea house. They do that at their homes. And they would do it at a tea shop. If you go to a tea shop, you can sample stuff, and there's someone there. But also, 
I once went into a hardware store in Chaozhou, where this practice kind of originates, and uh, they were drinking tea at the hardware store, and I went and got a pipe fitting. And I walked in, they were like, hey, you wanna drink tea with us? I sat down, drank tea with them for an hour and a half, left, didn't get my pipe fitting. <laughs> they didn't say anything, I forgot. That's just, the, it's the fabric of life in the parts of China, in the southeast of China where they do this, it is the fabric of life, they do it everywhere. Is there any stated or implied status uh, based on who's serving or any of that? No. Okay, no. so just in this situation, you could have just been like, hey, give me that, here we go. It's really about uh, equality and friendship and uh, yeah. just uh, bringing the community together, it sounds like. There's chai tea arts, which is much more formal, but it emerges from the folk practice that we're doing here. That's where it really comes from, is people hanging out, and people will do that in Chaozhou. You've got a bunch of people sitting around, usually at grandma, grandpa, they've got the charcoal stove, they're shouting at each other, drinking tea. One person's got their bag of tea and they're making tea, and then they switch, and then someone else is making tea for everybody else. And so the server, you know, their job is to serve, but they're not like a waiter, they're also the expert, they're the master of the what's going on. They're providing the service to people. So there's kind of this dual role, but they're definitely not above anybody, and no one's above anybody else. When I'm serving, I'm gonna serve in this direction, because that's a welcoming gesture. So there's your first little tip. Ah. If someone starts serving backwards, oh. they want you to leave. <laughs> really? Oh. This, this is bringing people in a very mm -hmm. subtle way of saying, all right, tea service is ending, serving the other way. So that's- Got it, yeah, got that's it. that's a good one. And I'm gonna go ahead and start our tea and I've, I've got a little treat for y'all. I'm gonna crack this guy here. This is a tongue of Dragon Bro. The tea we're gonna make today is called Dragon Bro. I wanna show you what it looks Sorry, like. Sorry, it sounded like you said a tongue of Dragon Bro. Our name yeah. for it. You gotta unlock that at level 16. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's oh, finally opened with two fists coming together. <laughs> exactly. So you were saying that we have little discs of tea in here called That's bings? That's right, exactly, bings. So tea was used as currency and still is along an ancient trade route called the Chama Gu Dao, the ancient tea horse road. And it comes like this, they'll pack cakes of tea that are pressed into exactly 357 modern grams each into these bamboo tongs is what it's called. It's a stack of seven. And you'll get to see what it looks like in a second. Uh, we actually needed to open a new one, so y'all came on the right day. And it's all sealed with bamboo and they've been doing it this way for hundreds and hundreds of years. How many servings are in here? There are seven cakes times, uh, you know, about 13 ounces, and say 72 servings. Good question. Thanks, Brian, for the lot of question. <laughs> lot just, of just put a bunch of math on the screen. Seven, so like more than 500. Wow. More than, look at that fast math, fast arithmetic. And like you said, this has been done like this for hundreds of years. And hundreds, it's probably up into the thousand plus years that they've been doing this. And this was, the Chinese government produced tea. It would press them in these cakes, trade them as currency for horses along this ancient trade route. On the road, the tea would age and start to ferment and get earthy and funky. Think of it like, like the way a cigar ferments, like composting, you know? Not like alcohol or yogurt or something, but dry fermentation. So it's like breaking down plant matter. And that's where it gets the earthy taste that we associate with aged tea. And so people would trade this for horses. One bing, 357 grams. Seven bings is a tong. 12 tongs is a gen. That's where the horse. One of the things with whiskey, even though you're only getting like a bit of a smoke from the peat from the island of wherever it was in Scotland or whatever, mm -hmm. you're actually experiencing a, a, a geographical location. Tea comes in from a certain place mm -hmm. and you knew it made the journey and it picked up certain aromas and everything the whole Absolutely. way it went there. Well, it's fascinating to me how one of the things about whiskey, for instance, is the consistency and trying to keep the same flavor profile in a barrel. But with tea, yeah, you do want consistency of the blend, but it's very dynamic in that as it ages, it changes, because you're not actually making the drink. Unlike whiskey, it's set, I guess. Uh, whereas with this, it's uh, it can oxidize further. There's a lot of different variations even among the infinite variations. Exactly. You actually hit on something really key there. Whiskey, wine, they're liquid when you get them. All the flavors that are gonna be in that bottle are already there, and it doesn't matter who pours it out, it's gonna be there. You let, them, let it aerate, and you let it breathe, and then that's there. Uh, for the most part, tea is solid, and you have to make it liquid, and how you do that is gonna have a profound effect on the finished product. Imagine if in wine culture, there was a step where you had to turn the wine into wine, how elaborate it would be, how many different little tools you would have, and how much training someone would have in that art, that's what this is for tea. And, so. and we're talking about everything from timing to, I assume there was something to the technique 
of how you use the knife to, Absolutely. I noticed that you carved out fairly large chunks of, of, of this tea. And it looked, uh, uh, from what we learned last time, that uh, I'm assuming this is a black tea that's been heavily oxidized? This is a poor tea, it's its own category. It's a hay cha, so it's been oxidized, but it's been fermented, which is the important step. Oh, got it, yeah. Got so it. in addition to being oxidized, which is a chemical process, it's been fermented, a microbial process. This is what it looks like when we've been chewing on it. I like to open it with my knife like so. That was very astute of you. You can see there's a divot here. Mm -hmm. The way that they press these is with a stone. They wrap it in a sack, they take a 15 kilogram stone, they put it on top of the tea in the sack, they stand up on it, rock it around, let it sit there, and it gets this called stone pressed poire. This is a stone pressed cake. So I like to come in from the side like this and break it like that. I'm gonna use my hand so I don't stab myself and break it and then lift up a flake like that. That way I leave the leaves intact. In that case, you don't have uh, the leaves themselves getting broken. A lot of care has been put into making sure these leaves stay whole. Why do you want the leaves stay whole? It's like the pepper in the gr pepper grinder and the pepper in the pepper shaker. When the leaves break, you get little fragments, it oxidizes faster, it's just lower quality tea. The grading of tea is the more whole the leaf, the higher the grade. I mean, yeah, there is a reason they call it fresh cracked pre pepper. You oh, know? Yeah, it's, it's like, totally, like totally you can tell the difference, yeah. So, when you're drinking tea in a tea house or in someone's home, here is a fun trick for you to do beyond just being able to drink liquid spirit. If we're hanging out here for hours and hours like you do in you know, normal life, we weren't filming a show, we'd be here for hours and hours drinking dozens of little cups of tea. If you were to say thank you every time and I were to say you're welcome every time, that's all we'd be saying. And so, they have a little, a fancy little trick. Here, I'm gonna rinse y'all's cups first and then show you this fancy little trick. When you are at a tea house in someone's home, even at a Chinese restaurant, if you do this trick, you will look like you know a lot about Chinese culture. Yeah. Whether you look like a badass or not, that's subjective. But you will look like you know what you're doing. And that is when I serve the tea right next to your cup, you're gonna tap your fingers like that. Here, I'll get it ready for you. I'll set you up for it. Okay, number of fingers, just one, two? Two, two fingers is fine. I mean... Uh, no, no difference right or left hand, or...? No difference right or left hand. Depending on who you ask, some people say one finger is for someone younger than you, two fingers is someone your age, three fingers is someone older than you, knuckles is for your teacher, you know, or someone, you know, that you're showing respect to. They don't do that in mainland China as much anymore because of communism. So they're not into the Confucian hierarchy. Oh, that's hierarchy. right, that's right, because that would be disrespectful and it would it would imply one entity has hierarchy. authority right. over the exactly. other, yeah. If you do it wrong, though, does someone get murdered or something <laughs> yeah. like that? Well, no, it's... Depends who you're having tea with. You know, like I said, you're not gonna offend anyone's ancestors here. We're just trying to have fun and, like, show out. So the tap is kind of a way of helping us do that because then I don't have to have this thank you, you're welcome, thank you, you're welcome. It's yeah. very subtle. And so I'm be serving you tea. We don't even have to stop talking. I'm gonna serve you and you can tap right by your cup. And the where this originates, there's a story. There's a cute story for this. A lot of cute stories in tea. There you go. Ready? Ready? Yep, ready, 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 ready. As soon as you do, yeah, yeah. Uh. Boom. And you can do it while I'm doing it too. Oh, really? Style oh, choice. Okay. Style choice. Boom. Nailed it. Great job, guys. So the story for this is that during the Ming Dynasty, an emperor wanted to go and be among his subjects, but not know that them not know he was emperor, so that he would just be treated like a normal person. Undercover boss. Ex yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, so yes. he was walking around, and he had his bodyguards with him because obviously he's got to have his bodyguards. But he was walking around doing you know stuff. They went to a tea house, and he was dressed as the manservant of his bodyguards. And so, in character as the manservant of his bodyguards, he served tea to one of his bodyguards. And it's such a great honor to be served tea by the emperor. If they were at court, that bodyguard would have to kowtow, which means you get down on your hands and knees and you touch your forehead to the ground twice. But obviously he would blow the emperor's cover if he did that. So right next to his cup, where only the emperor would be looking, he tapped his fingers to simulate the kowtow. Because when you're pouring tea for someone, you have to look at their cup. If you don't, you spill their tea. Oh, that's awesome. And it's really classy. This typifies what the Chinese think is classy and like elegant. It's like subtle and restrained. So from our previous episode, I got the impression that that one-handed, two-handed, however you want to hold it seems to be fine. If you want to be really fancy, three fingers, two on the this body slash mouth of the cup, and then right. one little finger underneath. And if you want to be extra fancy, you can put these two here. So it's bad form to do it like Brian does Jaeger, where you just 
put it on the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and shoot it back yeah, like that. that. Correct. Yeah. That would people would be so entertained. It would, it would be fine. <laughs> He's good at that. That's. I mean, it's hot. If you're down to do it, it's gonna. I'm gonna be you. huge in China, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ooh, this is yeah. a very different flavor than yeah. that green tea. This is a 2010, and it's the same dude who makes this tea. This is by Li Shulin, same guy who made the last tea that you had. Same style of tea, but the same different subcategory. We the both times we've had poor. Tea. Yep. The first was Shang Puar, the unfermented style. This is Shu Puar, the fermented style. And this is aged, this is from 2010. The older it gets, the more valuable it is. People buy these cakes, they put them away. There's special humidors just for them. They're called Pumidors, Puar Humidors. And people will, that's their whole job. They'll just buy tea, speculate in it, save it, age it 15, 20 years, and then make a killing selling it all off. What's phenomenal is since we've already gone through one journey with the green tea, I know we're just now ramping up and it's already very potent and uh, not bitter, but just very rich Earthy. in this flavor. Yes, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There are people whose entire interest in tea Ooh. centers around different vintages and different mountains of Puar. And that's all they care about. They don't drink oolong, they don't drink white tea, green tea, so red tea. so specific. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's, it's a lot like uh, beer nerds or, yep. or, or again, whiskeys. Yep. You know, because you can tell if you're an aficionado, you can say, oh, this one's from the Highlands, this one is Speyside. Could you get that uh, adroit at uh, determining what type of tea it was that you could say, oh, this is from this mountain. Oh yeah, this are there sommeliers that can just, just sip a tea and tell you what region it's from? Oh yeah, I mean, there are people who get formally trained in it. There's an art, they don't obviously not call them sommeliers in China, but it's uh, it, there's an art called Ping Cha. We actually taught that, we did a certification course for the formal style tea service, Cha Yi with Yao Yao, who is from Hangzhou. She actually studied this in a school in Beijing. She studied the formal style. Ping Cha is a formal art dedicated, and it's almost like a science. It's what tea tasters, tea buyers will do, just the way a coffee taster will go and buy coffee for a company. They'll go and they identify all the notes and the flavors, and there's a formal way of tasting it with a little spoon and everything. And yes, Absolutely. We even play a game at this tea house where if someone who works here comes in and there's a tea being served, you don't get to be told what it is. You have to guess. That's awesome. Yeah. So I am certain that traditionally the water was boiled by fire and so on, but now we live in a, a, a different age. The pot that you're using to heat this, you probably choose a specific number for the temperature. Is there is there an established right temperature that tea should be? Like with barbecue. Yeah, exactly. I actually don't choose the temperature. The temperature is always 100 degrees Celsius. I don't use temperature control kettles myself uh, because if you buy a bag of tea here, it will have a temperature on it. That is a guideline. What I'm really doing is adjusting the temperature for each steeping, depending on whether I want the tea stronger or softer. Mm -hmm. So those numerical temperatures are good for if you're trying to follow a recipe and not mess it up. If you want to be really good at serving tea, you develop uh, an organic sense for feeling the water, smelling the leaves, and deciding how to steep the tea based on that. This is the performative aspect that we were talking about. You are you are performing based on your timing of, of when it's time to deliver. Yeah, there is an element of precision to all of this, because you only steep the leaves for a very short amount of time. I know there's no ritual to it, but it all still is very precise. Absolutely, and you know, looking at the word, what is Gong Fu Cha? Well, Cha means tea, and Gong Fu, we actually do say that word in English all the time, but we pronounce it Kung Fu, Mm -hmm. And that word was introduced to the English language by Bruce Lee, and it refers in English to the Chinese martial arts. But it doesn't really mean that. Martial arts are called wushu, martial arts in Chinese. Gong Fu, which is how it's really pronounced, means skill acquired through mindful practice in anything. Like knife skills. You see someone going with their knives. That's their Gong Fu. Or like hammering a nail. You've ever seen like a, a carpenter just drive a nail with one stroke? Yep. It's cool, it's amazing. And then I'm there, I'm not a professional carpenter, I'm like tap, 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 tap. It's going sideways, I'm bending it, whatever. There's nothing that the master carpenter can say to the apprentice carpenter that will give them the skill of driving a nail with one stroke. They can tell them how to hold the hammer, how to aim, how to breathe, but that student is gonna to have to just drive thousands of nails mindfully and eventually they will cultivate the skill, the gong fu of driving a nail with one stroke. That's what this practice is all about for tea. So at this point, you did the initial wash and then we are now on our third uh, steep. steep. It is getting intense. Is it going to get more intense after this or are we about to ride the, the, the down, down wave? 
It could get more intense. Oh, yeah, we have I'm, not we I'm, have I'm not here, reached the zenith yet. For it. It's gotten noticeably <laughs> darker. Yeah. 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 When Jason came in, I was I was like, so you guys did a show about whiskey, and I was like, people who like whiskey tend to like this tea. We think of tea as a boop, you know. Yep. That's the Western perspective on tea, and there's all kinds of politics behind that. But in China, there's all kinds of different ways of expressing tea culture, and you've got you know a really classic tea culture in China. It's like grandpa. Smoking and shouting and drinking tea. Right. That's like classic Chinese grandpa. Playing move. Paizo. Yeah, playing mahjong or, or go or whatever. And just hanging out and drinking strong, strong tea. Especially in Chaozhou, they'll take like these Phoenix oolongs, they use these tiny little teapots, and they'll jam it in with their thumb and just get as many leaves as they can in there. And they're just getting, you know, high off of this tea because they're making it so, so, so strong. So with whiskey, oftentimes it's it's uh, culturally easy and socially nice to just have something in your hand. And I will oftentimes just, just nose a whiskey for the entire evening, maybe not even drink the entire thing. Is there sort of an upper limit of, of no nosing where it's like, are you gonna drink that or not? Nope, you are allowed to drink tea at whatever pace you want. When I am doing this style of tea service, that's acceptable because I have this, my Gong Dao Bay. Remember in the last episode, we had that glass pitcher. I'm exchanging my glass pitcher for this handmade long handle Gong Da Bei, which is, is uh, by, made by Liang Tu Studio in Jing Hong. I just like it, it's mine, this is my personal one. And because I'm using this, I'm doing a kind of a modified Taiwanese style of Gong Fu Cha right now. If I was doing Chaozhou style Gong Fu Cha, I wouldn't be able to serve the next round of tea until everyone had finished. Got it. Right now we're simulating the more relaxed, you know, maybe we're like you talked about playing Mahjong or arguing. Uh, uh, probably not politics. Uh, Nobody argues politics it, in China. That's, that's uh, exactly, exactly. Never, never comes up. <laughs> so this one should be pretty intense. Oh yeah. You know, I can decide how strong it is. If I, if y'all were getting like a little red in the face, and I was like, I should dial it back for these guys. Ooh, but really? y'all are, y'all are, this y'all are is so it like dark. Chips, so it looks like uh, like steak strong. sauce. I mean, yeah. it, it looks like uh, Folgers Crystals uh, coffee <laughs> at this point. Mm, I'm excited. Oh. And that dark, rich, earthy taste. When people come in and they're like, I wanna quit drinking coffee, I can't drink coffee anymore, what do we want me to drink? I say, buy a cake of this tea, put it on your kitchen table, get a little gaiwan, and every morning just crack a chunk off, throw it in there, pour some boiling water on it, you can drink it all day. And this is what I recommend to people who don't wanna drink coffee. Ooh, that's another good question. Let's say we come to a tea house like this. When I go to a restaurant, I would never say, hey, can I have some of whatever your food is that you sell and to take home so I can have it whenever I want. But at a tea house, is it expected that I might really enjoy this uh, and, and ask, you know, hey, uh, could I buy some of this oh, tea yeah. to take home? Oh, that's like the whole deal. Okay, yeah, got it. At least here at this tea house, in China, you go to, a, you know, most of the time in China, when you go to a, a business and you're drinking tea in the business, traditionally it would be a tea shop where actually the tea service is free. They're, you're, they're just hanging out drinking tea and you're just getting to try stuff. And then you buy stuff and bring it home. And that's kind of like our bread and butter here is mostly people going on the website, buying tea, and then people coming in. How do they know what they like? They come and they drink it here, they hang out, they get into tea. So what we're all about doing is helping people become connoisseurs of tea, helping people to explore tea culture, explore this very like broad and sometimes intimidating world of tea bringing it down to earth, democratizing it so people can really appreciate. And people come in here, they'll be 19 year old, you know, UT student, but they've gotten into tea and they're like, I want a Sheng Puer and I want it to be from the highest patch on the mountain. And I want it to have, you know, this age range. And they're very sophisticated. They develop a very sophisticated taste in tea. It happens over time, over many Ooh, sessions like oh, this. Now that, that invites a new question, like a 22 year old uh, student at UT down the road comes in, starts using your free Wi-Fi, keeps ordering tea and pays no attention. Treats this like a Starbucks, in other words. Uh, good move or jerk move? No, that's fine. Yeah? That's cool. I mean, okay. they're, they're here, they're patronizing the business and people use tea in all kinds of different ways. Most of the time people come in and they don't know what we do here, there's a lot of explaining. And we, we usually have people sit at that front of house table, that big round table, and it's $5 per person per pot and it's a very low barrier to entry. You can sit down and someone will serve you tea and everyone around you is drinking the same tea. And you're gonna meet all these people that you didn't know because they're all doing the same thing you are. If someone is renting a tea set and serving themselves tea and they want to co-work, we have a members section. You know, we have members at this tea house. It's a membership model tea house. And so our members can come here and co-work. And so it's totally fine. When someone's serving you tea, it's polite to not be on a device. 
But when if you're just chilling and serving yourself tea, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so right now, uh, I think I'm ahead of Jason. I would like more tea. Is it rude for me to, you know, go, <laughs> like, like, like wait, how, yeah. how, how does one what, indicate? What are, some, <laughs> and what are some faux pas? Yeah. Um, there's not a ton of them. Um, you, know, friend, you know, how do you signal that you want more tea? You have an empty cup. If you have an empty cup, that means that you want more tea. If you don't want more tea, you can leave your cup full, you can cover it when I come by to serve it, or you can turn oh, it upside that's down. That's something that would, I would think would be so rude. You know, like, eh, get out of here. Yeah. But, 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 but I guess no. No. Nah. Modern Chinese culture is very down to earth. People, like I said, People think it's like super polite, that's Japan. China is really, really down to earth and chill. Like, instead of saying thank you, we reduce it to this very simple gesture so that it's, you know, even less obsequious. If someone wanted to start getting into tea. Ooh, what's a good starter set? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, on our website, we've got a starter set that's made out of this kind of clay, this mutton fat jade porcelain that we're using here. As long as it has a vessel where you can have the leaves and the water together and then you can separate them. And that can either be like a teapot where you're pouring the water out and the leaves stay in there. It could be a strainer basket, something like that. It could be a, a gaiwan like I was using in the last episode, but you can check out our website. We've got them. There's all kinds of little starter sets out there. If you really want to do gong fu cha, then you're going to want either a teapot or a gaiwan. You want it to be small. You don't want it to be huge because then you're going to use a ton of tea and you know, you want to make small concentrated brews and you want to have, a, if you want to serve the tea and not just drink it by yourself, then you're going to want a vessel to decant it into, like a gong da bay, and pour it out of. If that's a gravy boat, that's fine. You can use a gravy, I've used a gravy boat to serve tea. Sometimes I'm at grandma's house and you know, that's what it she's got. It just now occurred to me, that's why we're able to steep the tea for such a short amount of time is because it's so concentrated and there's so little of it at a time. We're not doing the Southern bell thing of, of having know, a, a big jar guy. sitting yeah, on the windowsill. Exactly, right? <laughs> and that's uh, why we can sit and do it all day long and drink these little cups. Well, I suddenly know what gifts I'm gonna buy people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a link to the episode? <laughs> yeah, 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 we need a promo code now. Uh, uh, oh my God, uh, this has been amazing. I, I would ask for more, but we have to wait for the water to boil. <laughs> You're not gonna make a tea pun? You got one. When the pressure's on, Come on, hard, dude, you know. you're Mr. I'm done Jason with Murphy. teasing our host. Hey, yeah. all right, all right, all right. That's pretty low good, effort, that's pretty good. Effort. Jason Murphy, you know how sometimes people do responsible stuff like uh, No Shave November, where they raise awareness for a campaign or whatever? I, I'm familiar, yes. I wanna raise awareness of irresponsibility on the internet by being wildly inappropriate in Just Don't Worry About It July. I'm afraid of where this is going. Guess how many Wi-Fi's I signed up on? How many? All of them. Everywhere oh. I go, I just sign oh. up on any Wi-Fi. I go to all my institutions, so that way anybody knows exactly where I bank or where my loans are from, what my spending habits are. Oh my God. You, Why? You should see the targeted ads I'm getting now. Oh, oh that's a bad thing. I've stopped closing the door when I poop. Oh. I just want the whole, just forget about it, July. You know what? I barely put on clothes today. You need to use Nord. You don't understand, man. I'm seeing the real world. It's like that moment when Rowdy Roddy Piper puts on the glasses and he sees that the world is all ads. I get to see all of the ads. You're not supposed to embrace that. Oh, That's a bad there's thing. so many ads. And That's targeted. They're, they, they, it's like they know everywhere I've been. That's bad. You don't want them, they, knowing all of your secrets and business, seeing you poop with the door open. You don't do that. Okay. Don't poop with the door open. We've talked about this. NordVPN, virtual private network. Yeah, you sign up for it. Super complicated, sounds difficult, sounds expensive, sounds like trouble. It's not, it's Just cheap. Don't worry about it, July, man. Hey, you want my IP? I'll write it down I don't, for no, you. No, 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 yeah. no. You need, you need like a, a I'll Nord. I'll give you my social security number as well. You need to put up Nord yep. between you and literally everything else. They don't keep track of your logs. Yeah. They're a military grade encryption. It's really easy to use. You can use it on multiple devices. Yeah, but I, 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 I bet they would turn it 
it over to anybody who asks. Name one country with no extradition papers that they're located in. They're in Panama. Oh dear. Well, that would be hard to get that information. That's right. <laughs> you know what? You've convinced me. I no longer am going to irresponsibly give out all of my information to everyone. Instead, I'm going to enjoy the privacy, the security, the simplicity at a huge discount. Two years of NordVPN plus a bonus gift and 30 days of backseas by going to nordvpn.com slash rogue, but I'm going to spell it right, R-O-G-U-E, so that we get credit for the sale. And I am protected. NordVPN is here to chew bubblegum and protect your information. Well, how much bubblegum do they have? They're all out. Offer and link in the description below. That's my dog, game. Quinn. She just showed up, apparently. Throw me off my game. <laughs> Focusing on tea, what do I say next? Uh -huh. Dog! <laughs> Hi, Quinn. Yeah, I was sitting here going, Bryce is getting a pet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just looking, I was like, I want to buy the, the way, dog. Every